He has a specific hatred for servitors, the fallen machines created in the Traveler's image who enforce the fallen hierarchies by deciding who eats and who doesn't. His physical rejection of Elixni tradition is ultimately what drew him into the inner circle. Welcome back Guardians, today we're going to talk about the scorn and specifically some of the information that was released by Game Informer. However, I won't be covering everything because I want to avoid spoilers. This video will cover the history of the Scorn and specifically their relationship to the other fallen houses and also the Scorn's need for Aether, the life force of the fallen. I will not be talking about the names of the barons or their mechanics because I think that is better for you to experience when playing the game. This is Mylan Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let's start by discussing the Fallen Houses and which house the Scorn originated from. My first guess would have been the House of Kings, given the Grimmauld cards and the scannables that indicate Prince Aldrin's encounter with them. However, the Game Informer article reveals that the Scorn Barons are previously from the House of Exile. In fact, they were cast out from the House of Exile. Have a listen. The Barons were once a hodgepodge of lowly dregs, cast out from the upstart of House of Exile, forsaken and scorned by their own Elixni comrades. To truly understand what it would mean for the Barons to be cast out from the House of Exile, we need to take a closer look at the lore surrounding the House of Exile. The House of Exile is a really interesting narrative choice because typically they do not follow the Fallen Hierarchy. And the Fallen Hierarchy in Destiny 1 is tied to the distribution of Aether. Using information from Destiny 1, this is what we know about the House of Exile. House of Exile were most commonly found on the moon. This is when the houses had specific territories. Cade 6 says this about them in the House of Exile Grimoire card. They live among the hive. Of course, they're crazy. Apart from being on the moon and living amongst the hive, the second thing we know about the House of Exile is that they are comprised of outcasts and disgraced fallen from other houses. Consequently, House of Exile is mostly dregs, and in Destiny 1, the highest rank we saw in the House of Exile was ironically a Baron. Furthermore, Cade actually encountered a House of Exile Baron on the moon in Ghost Fragment of Fallen Grimoire Card. Cade actually fought back to back with this Baron whilst defending off the Hive. Have a listen to the House of Exile Grimoire Card, which explains the hierarchy of the house. It reads. There is more than a whiff of desolation about these fallen. Their ranks are swollen with dregs, their rags threadbare. Perhaps this is a new house, gathered from the outcast malcontents and disgraced castaways of others, galvanized by pride, or hate, or the desire for freedom. Be watchful. If this is true, they will shortly be hungry to secure their position, and that may drive them to bold action. The main information to note from this Grimoire card is that they are dregs that are galvanized by pride or hate or the desire for freedom. You may ask, freedom from what? And I believe this is referring to freedom from the traditional fallen hierarchy, i.e. a Kel rules the house and that servitors are revered as gods who produce the life-sustaining ether. Varax reinforces that the House of Exile do not have a Kel or follow the Fallen Hierarchy. Varax describes how scholars may seek out the House of Exile in the Kel of Kel's Grimoire card. It reads, He may seek to gather the Exiles, but they will not follow. They follow none. No Kel, no Archon. So why does this matter? Why does it matter that the House of Exiles do not have a Kel, do not have a leader? Well, the Fallen Hierarchy system is linked with their distribution of ether and ability to grow more powerful. Fallen can be demoted by having their lower arms removed. Yes, either a Captain or Kel using their swords would amputate the lower arms of a Fallen. 
instantly demoting them to a two-armed dreg. A dreg who proves themselves may be given the opportunity to regrow their limbs. Have a listen to the dreg grimoire card. It reads, Dregs cling to the lowest rung of fallen society, docked of their lower arms in a ritual of humiliation and obedience. Dregs seek to prove their worth. Only a few will survive to gain promotion and regrow their limbs. Their suicidal bravery is fueled by ambition and shame. To ensure that dregs do not regrow their limbs without proper promotion, in Destiny 1, docking caps were used. There are some hints that dregs can just regrow their limbs automatically, hence the docking cap inhibits this process. However, it is also thought that ether, the life force of the fallen, is required to regrow limbs. Servitors produce that ether. The Servitor Grimoire card reads, Servitors are living relics of the once mighty fallen civilization. Packed with ultra-sophisticated machinery, they process matter and energy into ether that the fallen depend on for life. Kells then distribute this ether using an Elder Cipher, which I assume allows them to choose worthy underlings to regrow their limbs and become stronger. This is supported by the Elder Cipher description, which reads, Kel uses ciphers to control the ether flow. Archons and barons take deep drafts, grow tall. Dregs with tiny sips stay small. So essentially the Kel distributes ether, thereby choosing who becomes more powerful within their house and who can regrow their limbs. The House of Exile do not follow this system. They refuse to be ruled by any Kel. Now it appears that the Scorn Barons, who were cast out of the House of Exile, continued to reject the Fallen Hierarchy. And of course, without a Servitor, they needed other ways to get Aether and to grow strong and to regrow their limbs. Remember that the Barons at one stage were only dregs. Have a listen to how Game Informer describes the Barons and how they acquired Aether to grow stronger. The barons were once a hodgepodge of lowly dregs, cast out from the upstart House of Exile, forsaken and scorned by their own Elixni comrades, and with no one to depend on but each other, they didn't just survive, they thrived through ingenuity, ruthlessness, and teamwork. They raided their fallen brethren's encampments, stealing ether and growing ever stronger. They pillaged and terrorized awoken outposts throughout the post-Taken War Reef. Like the cowboys of Tombstone, they became the scourge of the reef, overpowering other gangs of fallen pirates and scavengers, and rendering the once flourishing homeland of the Awoken into a lawless frontier. So this is quite remarkable. These barons were cast out from the House of Exile as dregs, so they already had their lower arms amputated and they managed to steal enough ether from other fallen to grow stronger, regrow their limbs and grow to the enormous size we see right now. While the barons obviously need ether to grow, Game Informer also hints at the barons now being less dependent on ether than typical fallen. In fact, some of the barons despise servitors, the very thing that produces their life source. Have a listen. He has a specific hatred for servitors, the fallen machines created in the Traveler's image who enforce the fallen hierarchies by deciding who eats and who doesn't. His physical rejection of Elixir tradition is ultimately what drew him into the inner circle. And this. A silent sadist known for his penchant for docking and tearing ether generators from the cores of servitors with his bare hands. His obsession with torturing servitors is unprecedented in the history of the Elixni. Without doubt, even though the barons have left the House of Exile, they still continue this same philosophy, this hate for the Aether Fallen hierarchy system. This hate for Aether and dependency on servitors may have led to new methods for sustaining a fallen life. And remember that the Fallen also tried to do this with Siva. They made enhanced Aether with Siva, and in Destiny 2, the Fallen in the Arcology were also trying to secure other technology to make ether. Regardless, there are a couple of clues that the Scorn have found other sources of power and strength, or at the very least have corrupted their ether. Have a listen to the article. 
unaffiliated Archon priest imbued with a power akin to that found in and around the European Dead Zone. Do not engage until the depth of his power is known. And, while they were once fallen, corrupted ether, suffering through strange experiments, repeated reanimation, and being buried alive in the heart of an asteroid has mutated these enemies. And this, they became something horrible because of that situation. They bonded and mutated within these dark caverns. They're like an evolution of the fallen if you stuck them in a corner. The article talks about the fallen being imbued with a power akin to the EDZ, which makes me think of the corrupted Traveler's Shard. They also mentioned corrupted ether, which makes me think that the barons have modified ether in some way, similar to the enhanced ether with Siva. And finally, there are hints that the fallen have evolved just from being trapped in this asteroid or separated with the reef. This makes me think that the same forces that created the Awoken following the collapse have also evolved the Fallen, just from being in this area. Game Informer talks about how the Tangled Shore is on the edge of the void, and we know that the Awoken were mysteriously created in this space, so it would be reasonable that the Scorn who had been dominating this area had also been changed or evolved. To summarize the Scorn Barons, they originate from the House of Exile and hate how the Traveler-like Servitors dictate their growth and strength with the distribution of Aether. Therefore, Aether has either been changed in some way, i.e. corrupted, or they found alternative sources of power and strength, which may be from the EDZ or from the Edge of the Void. I would speculate that it was this change in life source, corruption of Aether, or sourcing of other powers helps to explain why the Scorn looks so different from the other Fallen. Their life force has changed. I want to finish this lore video with the Grimoire card, A Dreg's Promise. A Dreg's Promise emphasizes that Dregs have nothing to lose and everything to gain. It symbolizes the dangers of a Dreg, the lowest rung of Fallen society, the lowest rung that eventually formed the Scorn Barons and now the greatest threat to the city. Have a listen. There is a story old as time, of he who would catch the stars, unnamed and eternal. The star catcher would lead the fallen, rising from the lowest station to the highest exalted peaks. It is a fairy tale allowed to persist by the four-armed, to keep the docked hopeful, placated. Even the low may one day ascend. Myth, fairy tale, or a prophecy of what will be, it's best not to take chances. After all, one can't reach across the black to claim dominion over 10,000 stars with 10,000 arms if they die here and now with only two. That concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the phrase Corrupted Ether" to symbolize the changing fallen into the scorn. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.